Hi, this is Bishop Frank Dupre, and it's another drive-by message. I want to talk to you today about, again, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to bring to you, bring to your mind some of the things that happened historically in the time of Christ at the day of Pentecost. It's coming up soon. It's 50 days after Easter. Pentecost is 50. And so that, that's when this uh, feast takes place. Now, they were going to do this a little fast today. There were three major festivals or feast days, holy days of the Jewish people during the time of Christ. Moses had said that they must come and uh, celebrate the feast of the Lord three times a year. There were other feast days, but these were the three that the men had to come to as the representatives of the families and the tribes. And so there was Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Now, Passover has been fulfilled spiritually for Christians. We believe that Christ is our Passover. He is the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world. By believing in that, we receive forgiveness and our sins are forgiven. We become a new creation. We become born again. We have a new life. Our sins are washed away and we have a new life within because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Now the Holy Spirit, one of the uh, uh, emblems of the Holy Spirit is oil. And so when we are born again, it's as if you are an oil lamp that is being filled with oil. And now you have the oil inside, the life is inside of you, potential is inside of you, everything that you need is inside of you. And then Pentecost comes 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And for Pentecost, now that's a different festival. That's a festival of the promise of a harvest. And what they did is just before Pentecost, certain priests would go out and they would encircle a sheaf of wheat or barley, whatever the grain was. And then on Pentecost morning, they would go out into the field at six in the morning at sunrise, cut that sheaf, bring it into the temple and wave it. Uh, and then when they were at the temple at nine o'clock, which was the hour of prayer, 120 silver trumpets would blow and proclaim the, the harvest is promised because God has blessed us. Now, I want you to look at symbolism here. There were 120 silver trumpets blown on Pentecost Sunday in the temple. 120 is a, is a, a powerful number, means a lot of things, and silver is the metal that speaks about redemption. Silver means redemption. And so remember, Jesus has redeemed us on Passover. On the cross, when he died, he redeemed us from our sins. And when he was resurrected, he brought new life into us and the Holy Spirit comes inside of us as we believe. Now, on Pentecost Sunday, there were 120 believers in the upper room praying in one accord. They were all together in one accord, waiting for the promise that Jesus had said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So they're praying in the morning and the priests are out cutting the wheat. They're bringing it into the temple. At the moment that they're getting ready to blow 120 silver trumpets, God is getting ready to drop fire from heaven on 120 believers who are silver in the spirit because they've been redeemed. And so a mighty rushing wind comes into the city. Thousands and thousands of pilgrims are in the city because it's Pentecost, it's a feast day, a festival, and there are thousands of people there. They feel and see this rushing wind. It comes in so fast, so strong, and they're wondering what's happening. People are taking cover from this wind, and then all of a sudden someone screams, there's a fireball in the sky, and fire begins to come down from heaven. Now that speaks of the same thing that happened when Solomon dedicated the temple many, many years before, that God sent fire from heaven when he approved of the sacrifice that had been made. Made. And so now fire is coming down and it goes and it lands on the roof of this place, which we know as the upper room, where there are 120 silver in the spirit, redeemed people praying. And the spirit of God comes upon them and that ball of fire splits up into individual tongues of fire. Each one lands on someone's head and as it does, they begin to speak in other tongues. They begin to speak in the language of other peoples that they don't know how to speak in. They begin to speak in what Paul the Apostle described as the tongues of angels. And so they're speaking in other tongues. People on the outside are wondering what happened? Why did God send this wind and this fire? And now we hear this noise up in this place. People are screaming, what's going on? And then Peter and the 120 file out of the upper room onto the street 
to be met by over five, six, seven thousand people. They're gathered around wondering what's going. And Peter preaches his first message under the power of the Holy Spirit. Three thousand are added to the church that day and they're saved. They're born again. Their sins are forgiven and they enter into the family of God. One more thing. When we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us like oil. When we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we're engulfed in the Holy Spirit as the fire of God, that's when the tongue of fire comes upon us. We speak in tongues. Think about it this way. An oil lamp filled with oil is a wonderful thing, but it's not really that useful. It's more of a decoration until it's lit, until the flame comes and it's lit. And Christianity, without the power of the Holy Spirit, without the flame of the fire of God on a person's life, invigorating them, refreshing them, giving them power and anointing, as Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When you're a child of God, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you see it the way I'm talking about it, you'll see that Passover has been fulfilled. Pentecost is fulfilled you're getting ready to be fulfilled. We'll talk about tabernacles at another time. This is Bishop Frank Dupre with another drive-by message. I'm on my way somewhere, so I've got to end it now. You can go to my website, www.frankdupre.com and find out more about the church and the ministry that I have. God bless you. Have a great day.